Okay, so we got a good one today. We are headed to Josh Gibson, which is our lead inspector in A Action Home Inspection Group. And we have a 1940s flip that we're headed to, which is super nice. Uh, I keep choosing old houses, but one day I want to take y'all to a new home because Josh was at a new home, uh, what, last yesterday? And there was like three active roof leaks, but it's hard to choose them because I don't know which ones are gonna be the bad ones. Uh, but anyways, this one's a 1940s house and it's like t a little over 2,000 square feet and it looks like it's been flipped. So this could be either really good or really bad. Uh, the only thing the homeowner said that they were worried about was mold. Uh, home inspectors, we are not mold inspectors, but what I can do is help spot it. And if I see any signs of it, we will refer them to a mold uh, technician uh, down here. So that being said, uh, let's go check it out. So showing up to this property, 1940s, I was hoping to show up and give you all some really exciting stuff that we found that is wrong, but we didn't. Uh, we're not finding too much on this one, which is actually a really good thing. The flippers actually have done a really good job, and I don't even consider this one a flip home. I bet there was a very responsible homeowner that uh, solely upgraded the home over time. So you can really tell by the quality of the windows and the property. They have a new panel box. The foundation is solid. They have a newer HVAC system. They replaced all the plumbing inside the property too as well, and there's a new roof on it. So there's a lot of really good things on this property. So. We're going to turn this one around a little bit and we're going to focus on where we would look for mold. You know, as home inspectors, especially Trek inspectors, we are not mold inspectors. But if we see signs of microbial growth around the property, we can refer it on. And so let's just focus on where I would find mold normally in a property where I'd be like, hey, I got some discoloration and uh, there is some microbial growth and it needs to be further evaluated. So let's go see what we're going to go find or the areas that I'm supposed to look, something like that. Let's go check it out. So uh, um, one of the first areas that we always look when we first show up to a property is underneath the kitchen sink because we'll always run the hot water and we open up all the cabinets and we'll look underneath the kitchen sink. A very common place for mold to grow is where there's elevated moisture. And so you always have a dishwasher running most of the time, a few times a week, and then you have a sink that's always running. So this would be a very common area that you would start to have microbial, microbial growth in a property. So uh, underneath the sink, this sink, it's very clean. There, there's no signs of any uh, moisture at all. It's really dry. And uh, so let's go to the next spot. So the next sign where we see microbial growth a lot inside these older properties is around the air registers. So if the air registers are, have the older metal ducts or the metal face plate, plates, what happens is they built these really big HVAC units and they would blow a lot of air through them and the, the face plates and the metal ductwork would condensate and it would create microbial growth in the property. We haven't been up in the attic yet. We don't know if they have that type of ductwork, but they have switched out all of the old metal uh, register vents and we don't see that. And there, you will see like microbial growth or a lot of dust particles coming out of the attic in these areas. And today we, we don't see that either. So um, we'll go to the next spot. Hey guys, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Uh, that helps grow the YouTube channel and you can always catch us on the next one if you hit that little bell. So uh, another spot where we find microbial growth or you know some moisture is in the air return vent. We'll open these up if we can and uh, look inside. And whenever we, you just have a lot of air movement, you know, in a, in a certain area, you can get some dampness or some, you can see some mold on the back of the sheetrock in this area. So if you can have any hatches or anything you can look behind, things that you normally can't see or a common person can't see and clean up, that's where you're normally gonna find that microbial growth or extra moisture. So. Uh, today, um, it's actually pretty dry in there. It's just a little dirty and it's, it's not sealed up the way it should be. But again, it's, it's, it's a 1940s home. It's not going to be 100% perfect, but the biggest thing is, is we don't see any moisture growth in there and, or any type of microbial growth, which is, which is a good sign. So another area, what you would normally look for, for mold, this is where our infrared camera will come into play here in a minute, but the you look for staining or any types of water stains on the roof or the ceiling, the roof, <laughs> the ceiling. Uh, and right here you can see this is actually a patch, but we want to question, you know, why is there a patch there? It's new, 
my guess is someone stepped in the wrong spot because it's right next to the attic ladder. But uh, you want to keep an eye out for any discoloration or staining that because that might mean there's elevated moisture in the area. If there's a long, consistent portion of wa water happening over a long period of time, that's when mold can start to grow. If you just have like a, a very temporary leak and it's solved right away and it dries up, you really won't have much mold growth in that area. So uh, not, uh, we'll further investigate this here in a little bit and we'll kind of get that closer to the end of the video. So again, like I said in the past about opening up all the hatches, what we like to do is we run the bathtub for an extended period of time and we'll actually fill up the tub too as well and then we'll release the water but this is a common area where a lot of moisture runs through and then also you have these jetty tubs uh, the jets so what you would want to do is look in the hatch while the jets are running and then also look underneath here while the the tub drains and this will help determine if you have a lot of moisture in this area that's leaking that's not draining properly so underneath this cabinet area it's dry but so Josh actually, whenever he was inspecting, he saw some like glistening in there and that's where our really good like long mirror could come into play and you can kind of look and see if there's any moisture building up underneath this tub. Today we didn't get anything, but uh, come and take a look. So one of the other things that we can do to guess, an educated guess, is we're going to determine if the shower pan is leaking in this area. Because if you have a leaky shower pan, that means that there's a lot of moisture because most people do use the shower more than the tub. So if you have a leaky shower pan, you always have elevated moisture and it can lead to mold growth behind the wall here. So what we do is we use this shower pan uh, stopper here. This is my father actually my father and stepmother, they run a Action Home Inspection Group up north and they manufacture these shower pan testers. So if you want one, you go to showerpantester.com and I do not get a discount for saying this. They charge me full price for these. So y'all should, should talk to them about that. So we just uh, run the shower. Uh, just a, oh, this is a weird one. Yeah, we'll run the shower. We'll leave the shower pan tester there. Sometimes that shower pan tester seal doesn't set 100%, so we'll throw a paper towel in there or something, and then what we do is let it run for a second and see if we see any elevated moisture on the exterior of the property. So we have a little bit of high soil, and yes, it is starting to rain, and actually the best time to do inspections is in the rain. It's just inconvenient for us, but actually good for the clients. So, but whenever it's raining, that can help us find active moisture with our infrared cameras, because it's more of a uh, right here right now type of thing with the with the water I'm kind of rambling but actually why I'm outside is because of the shower pan and one thing as soon as we notice when we walked outside you have a little bit of high soil you're going to get that a lot in these 1940s properties and they did a really good job we brought this up in the last video where they put this rock barrier in place to help the water drain because by them increasing the soil then you have too much soil uh, high wall high too much soil against the wall and if you have the soil too low then you create a negative slope towards the structure so that being said what happened was is what, because it's been raining so much whenever i pull back the rock to see if the shower pan's uh, leaking or not it's really hard for us to tell because the foundation's damp from the rain so what we'll do is uh, we'll run a lot of water through it and see if that moisture increases or not uh, so right now the test is not finished Okay, before the rain gets too bad, we let the water sit in the shower pan for an extended period of time and then we released it. And uh, over here on the, ex on the wall around the corner, it's actually completely dry on this area. So our conclusion is the shower pan is not leaking today, which is uh, good news. Good news for the client, the buyer. And uh, let's uh, look at one more spot that we look for mold all the time. So one of the other tests actually goes with a general feeling because we've been in thousands of homes as a home inspector and you know we walk through the entire property and it feels pretty consistent with like the humidity through the property but when we step in the garage of course the humidity is going to be different because it's not cooling but we get a smell we can it smells a little musty in here and then also in the corner of the property we notice that we've had a lot of rain and we have some standing water in this location so 
My guess is from all the heavy rain, it probably came from outside the way the garage is sloped and it sits in this area, which can cause that musty smell. But you just don't want to go with that just conclusion of what if. So what we're going to do is because we've had a lot of rain, we're going to shoot an infrared scan of the wall in this location and then also run some moisture meter tests if we have any active color changes or temperature difference in this wall. So a uh, really cool find, but also remember it's not definite. So if you walk into a property, you have like a lot of musty smelling and you're walking through the property, it, it's a good idea to maybe even pull an outlet or two to look inside the area because we actually had a house in Galveston where our inspector named Randy, he just, it just felt, funny throughout the entire property. He had that weird musty feel and uh, he pulled a few outlets and he had that little line of mold around the outlet. They hired a mold inspector and it needed $300,000 worth of tests. So let's uh, scan this wall here uh, with the infrared scan and that stain in the, in the hallway. And then what we'll do is uh, pull an outlet or two and that's it. Okay, so conclusion of the video, just remember whenever you're looking for microbial, microbial growth, you are looking behind things, you're looking underneath sinks, you're looking at where there's excessive air flows, temperature difference, water stains, and you're looking for any, and then actually the general overall feeling of walking through the property. Maybe pull an outlet or two to see if you have any growth in the wall behind those areas. Uh, remember, you know, we are not mold inspectors we can just look for signs of mold and then we'll refer it to an expert if we see something like that but uh, yeah this one overall looks pretty good uh, we didn't see any signs of microbial growth today other than the garage in this location where we get that musty feeling but i really do believe it just falls with this water we can just educate the buyer and if they want to get further testing uh, that, that's going to be up to them with that being said, please always like and subscribe to the videos and leave a comment for the type of content that you would like and catch us on the next one.